how what was it like directing a sequel to to the nun it's such a huge a huge horror movie so you know you know, I was drawn into it because of the nun herself. Actually, both nuns. I gotta say, first and foremost, because of Bonnie Aarons, because of the incredible, iconic horror icon that she is. Um, I have been dying to work with her. I mean, even like going back to like you know the Mulholland Drive and the uh, you know the the character she plays in that. I was like terrified of that for the brief yeah. time on screen. Um, I think the character James created with her is so amazing, so iconic. I'm grew up Catholic. So that totally touches a nerve. Um, and she, I, I jumped at the opportunity. I, th I think she's one of the great modern movie monsters. And, and I felt so lucky to be um, making a, uh, another movie, uh, you know, with her. The other nun that I have to say um, that totally drew me in was uh, Thaisa Farmiga. I think that she is such a powerhouse actress and she did such a great job in the first film. I'm like a huge fan of all her all her work and and American Horror Story, and I think right. she does some of her best work in this movie. I think she's she's so good. She gets so scared. She's so vulnerable. She also has these moments where she's really empowered, and and I think Tysa really gets to show everything she's got. So um, I think that was the big opportunity that made me just jump right in on it. I mean, that's an opportunity that you can't pass up, you know, especially a James, a James Wan universe film. Like, that's, um, no, I want to ask you about religious horror. You touched on that a little bit. So how did that, so you grew up Catholic. Is that something that you really, that's like a deep-seated fear with you? Like, uh, um, I think that whenever you're talking about God, you're always talking about the devil. I think that there is like, you can't have right. the light without the dark. And I think that that is, it's built into faith and discussions about faith. And um, it's, I think it taps into something that's very, very, not just for people who grew up with it, something that's like old and nostalgic, but also it right. taps into something that is ancient in all of us. This is, um, the, the tradition and the history of the Catholic church is so powerful and just the, the power of faith goes back. Its roots are so deep and we really dive into that. I, I don't want to get into any spoilers, but there's, right, there's real Catholic history that we, uh, we dig into and it's, it mm -hmm. becomes, uh, um, you know, one of the core elements of the film. And I think that, I think that anchors the movie. I think it, it really cuts to uh, the emotional core. Can you talk about a little bit? I I heard and correct me if I'm wrong that it was shot. You shot uh, some scenes in an abandoned church, right? In, in France, we did. Yeah, in Aix en Provence, there was this uh, this old church. It's the from our opening scene. Um, something very violent and horrific happens in this place, and uh, so we okay. couldn't be working in a real um, in in a. Um, a, uh, a functioning church because the Catholic church wouldn't allow what we were going to do. So we found an abandoned church and um, that was actually just really amazing and had this great texture. And uh, it was cool. It was a great location, a very yeah. effective place to, you know, open the, uh, the open the movie at. Um, it was also really spooky. We were, you know, the place is like, like what's great about France is like, everything's like the, the, the newest thing is like 200 years old. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The church was like 500 years old or so. It was like, it was, it might have been older than that. It, there's, you know, all of it's so, um, it's, it's so old. And we were going in the, the scouts and there's only a handful of us. And the main body of the church is really ornate and beautiful. And like, you know, you're like, oh, this place is great. Let's see like what other kind of side catacombs there are. And, and we kind of took this like one kind of corner down into like the basement. And the, people have not been in this place for like years. And like, you know, we had yeah. our like cell phone lights on and it's like just super narrow and you're just kind of snaking down and it gets really freaky. It gets like, cause you're yeah. so phobic in there. You know, you're just like, you know, they, they don't have like any electricity, any lighting. And you're like, first of all, you're also wondering like, is the thing going to collapse on us? Like, has there Collapsed. been any yeah. structural like investigation here? Are we the, like the first people to go in there? Um, but yeah, yeah. Like naturally scary. I think that it kind of, it just evokes something like being in these places that you're just kind of sucks you in, you know? 
Yeah, I wish I had more time, but that like I was gonna say kind of reminds me of like the as above still below movie. Like you were literally in that totally, real life. Totally yeah. like that. I was thinking that same thing. And it's like it's weird because there was also like there was kind of like little bits of like old wooden furniture, like it was kind of like broken pieces, like chairs and stuff. And it kind of reminded me of because I think there was that piano in that movie. But yeah, it totally had that vibe. 